To understand the importance of anions in quantum computation, let's take two identical elementary particles. Quantum mechanics dictates that their state is described by their joint wave function. If we now exchange these two particles, then this wave function picks up a phase denoted by alpha. If we now exchange them again, then we pick up the same phase alpha once again. In our three-dimensional world, now we are back to our original wave function. It then follows that we only have two types of elementary particles. Alpha is either zero, and after two exchanges, we also have a zero rotation, the wave function that we started with. This alpha defines bosons, such as photons. Alternatively, alpha equals to pi, and after two exchanges, we rotated the wave function with two pi, which is a full circle. In this case, we have fermions, such as electrons, protons, or neutrinos. In two dimensions, this picture changes dramatically because particles can keep track of how many times they were exchanged around each other. Therefore, we lose the previous restriction of alpha, which only allowed for two types of elementary particles. In two dimensions, the alpha phase can be anything, and we have a different set of, art set of particles for every alpha. These particles are called anions. More generally, the exchange operation may be a non-trivial unitary operation, which brings the system to a new quantum mechanical state after each exchange. As these operations generally don't commute, we call the associated anions non-abelian. As a side note, I mentioned that this expression comes from the group theory of mathematics. Now we have a connection to quantum computation. Every quantum gate is a unitary operation, so we will somehow have to harness the non-trivial exchange operation to ex execute quantum algorithms with these particles. We will discuss this in the next video. Now let's take a set of these non-abelian anions. A key property of this system is that it has multiple quantum mechanical states with the same lowest energy. In other words, it has a degenerate ground state. The ground state is separated from the higher incoherent energy levels by an energy gap. To perform coherent operations, we want to stay in the ground state of the system. Our exchange operation then moves the system from one, gr one ground state to another. This means that these states define a quantum bit, which is free from relaxation. Since it is in its ground state, it cannot lose energy to its environment. It also cannot gain energy from its environment because of the energy gap above the ground state. We created a qubit, which is pro protected from noise or thermal fluctuations from its environment as long as those are smaller than the energy gap. The size of the gap depends on the physical implementation of the qubit, and it is one of the most important parameters to optimize. Furthermore, small, small changes in the exchange path don't matter. If we exchange the same set of particles, we always do the same quantum operation. And as a result, we can now understand why operating on these quantum particles can lead to perfect quantum gates. If we slightly change the exchange path because of external noise or control infidelity, our quantum operation remains the same. This property is usually referred to as the topological equivalence of the exchange path. In the next video, we'll see how the non-abelian anions fulfill the requirements of building a quantum computer.